making something that is not just a ball, right? It's something that we see on tour. The pros winning tournaments with something that you made yourself here, it's, uh, it's really good, yeah. It feels really good. Take pride in that and take pride in when you turn the TV on on Sundays and see, you know, John Rahm and Xander playing well that, you know, you had a small, you had a small part of that. Well, knowing that we made it here, it's, it's pretty exciting. We rolled into Chicopee, Massachusetts, the crossroads of New England, which is a historic blue-collar town in western Massachusetts, and we were welcomed to the historic ball plant by Norm Smith, who showed us around all day. We're going to follow the progress of how we manufacture a golf ball, but the first step in making a golf ball is the core, right? And the first step of the core is we mix the materials for it. Now, Norm's a VP and very good at his job, but to get the full picture of the ball plant, we wanted to talk to some of the employees on the floor. The place we started was the place they start, and that's with rubber mixing. So after loading everything in the mixer, everything is dispersed and mixed evenly until you have a uniform batch. Uh, this is the last step of the mixing process where you drop the rubber on the mill. You are uh, distributing and dispersing every single component uh, of the recipe, right? So think of it as the batter for your cake. It's a, to make it simple, that, that's the batter right here. Yeah. Right. And yeah, yeah. Core molding is gonna be the oven, to make it simple. So right? you got raw ingredients, batter, yeah. and then later, yeah. oven. All right, that's a good way to think about it. And is every golf ball core basically the same, or do you guys have a better recipe than some other companies? Well, you know, so every single product that we sell have a specific uh, performance criteria, you know? Uh, so every single recipe is going to have a different chemistry, different ingredients, and uh, we are pushing really hard to make the best products right now. We invest a lot of money in equipment, personnel, R&D, so I think we make the best product right now. Whether Callaway has the best golf ball out there right now is certainly up for debate, but what you can't argue with is with the massive investment that they have put into this plant. Callaway pledged to spend $30 million in Chicopee, then it became $50 million, and they haven't updated it recently, but they've definitely blown past both of those numbers. So, the material's been mixed, everything's been incorporated, and this is to cool down the material, because we want to make sure that we take it from the temperature that we mixed it and milled it at, down to room temperature. How do you cool something down? How do you cool down? Literally a bunch of fans. Okay. So, it is draped on some festoons, on some bars, yeah. and literally it's being cooled down by fans. Okay. So, regulated to make sure we reach the temperature that we want. After the material's been cooled down, it comes down this chute, and every single batch then gets tested. We do a series of tests to make sure that all of the properties on those batches of rubber are exactly what we want them to be. We actually then store the batches in our conditioning room. We built specifically to make sure that we can environmentally control the area where we're storing the rubber. Does it feel extra controlled in here, Claire? Oh yeah. It is very dry. If you stayed in here for a little bit, your lips would get uh. chapped. Uh-huh. It didn't take much time on the floor to realize just how much the process and the product and the end result means to the people involved. And that really includes the guys on the floor themselves. We met Ed Santos at the extrusion step of the process. All right, so what, what's happening right here at this right part here. of the process? This is the extrusion process. We actually make the preforms here. So really cool process. I try to explain it like if you're making, uh, you know, Play-Doh back in the day where you had this cool little press that you would press it through a oh, dot. It's kind of coming through yeah, the... Just like that, right? So you have under pressure, under heat, and it, it goes through, pulsates through the uh, the die, and it gets cut at a certain uh, length and, and, and size. And we have technology that lets us stay tight to those tolerances and allows us to make the best pre-pour, best core, and, and, and so forth. Yeah, so how long have you worked here? So my story is a little unique to a normal employee at Callaway Golf. I've been here for 29 years. 29 years? Yeah, I started in 1993 on the shop floor and I have, uh, you know, kind of made my way up the uh, the chain. Um, it's a little special for me because my family uh, has also had, my, my dad retired from Callaway Golf uh, over 30 years, my aunt, my uncle, so when Norm kids about bleeding Callaway, 
this is a special place to me. It's not just a job. It's, it's been something a little bit different in my, in yeah. my career. I mean, what is the, the investment from Callaway and the fact that there's, you know, jobs not just not just not disappearing, but actually like coming and creating and being created here. What does that mean to the area? Well, I, I think it's, it shows that to the community that Callaway and the stockholders, everybody that, that's bought into us, they are not afraid to invest into the business, knowing that the returns and what we're doing to develop and consistently deliver the best golf ball that we've ever made. We haven't always been this good, right? We had old machinery, antiquated stuff, but now with everything that has changed and the investment from the Callaway and headquarters in Carlsbad, that gives them the confidence that we will only continue to grow the, the, the company, more uh, market shares. You know, we're, we're going after one person, right? And you know who that is. And rest assured, we're coming. And, and they know we're coming. And we're coming with with hard work, dedication, and you know, commitment to making the best ball possible, period, right? The next step in Callaway's pursuit of the best golf ball possible is core molding. The first time this piece of rubber finally looks like a golf ball. Whoa. So what we have done is we've automated this process where we're taking the preform, we're loading them into our molds, and then curing them time, temperature, and pressure. So what you see is a series of presses. The robot is now closing the mold, and then you'll see the robot lift up the mold and insert it into the press. Okay. Okay. Then you'll see the press close. There's then a, an exothermic reaction that cures the rubber. From this point, you take that squishy preform that you saw, and you turn it into a sphere that's very, very hard. Started as a marshmallow and kind of a cylinder. Now, it's very hard. Can't no give to it, well, not really any give to it, and very circular. And it probably bounces. It bounces quite well. Can I bounce it? Yes, you can. Oh. oh. There's a lot of this process that Callaway wouldn't let us show you. High-tech x-rays let Callaway measure the insides and outsides of the ball to the smallest fractions you can imagine. They also wouldn't let us film the addition of their outer layers, the mantle and the cover. but they did lay it out pretty well for us on the table. We then put a mantle on top of the core. So you now have the core and then the mantle. So it's just that, that mantle is, I mean, it's significant, but it's, it's thin still. So it's not significantly changing in size. Now it is perfectly spherical and perfectly the size that we want. We then put a cover on that, and then this is the finished ball. Now the three rows that you have here, because there's more here, this is Chrome Soft, Chrome Soft X, and yep. Chrome Soft XLS. So in the case of X and XLS, after we have that first mantle, we put a second mantle on before we put the cover on. Got it. And so you can see, this is an easier one to see because of the colors, you have the core, the first mantle, the second mantle, and the cover. That's a very satisfying one to look at color-wise, yeah. Things used to look a little bit different inside a Callaway golf ball. The change from an inner and outer core to just a single uniform core is the sort of thing that Dave Melanson and his team do. Dave, how long have you worked here? 24 years. And what was your what, what were you doing when you first started out here? So I started out as a technician in research and development. In the role I'm in now, uh, we are the bridge between R&D and manufacturing. So we help take the new product designs, uh, bring them out to the manufacturing sites, make sure that they're manufacturable, vet any risks, make sure that we're making the best product that we can. Making the best product we can has become a pretty common theme by this point. And they did allow us to show you one x-ray process and I'd have to say it's a pretty cool one. This is another station where every single ball that we manufacture in this facility goes through this process to ensure that it's what it's supposed to be. So everyone gets this kind of like performance and cosmetic double check or quadruple check or whatever it is at this point. Yeah. Each ball has a bunch of pictures taken from different angles basically or? They're moving the ball and they're rotating it to a precise orientation uh -huh. because not only do we need to measure every single side, we're evaluating that aerodynamic geometry, so we need to know what we're looking at for those aero features. Yeah. Right? But Dave tells us that quality control goes far beyond just the x-ray machines. Every golf ball is going through this intensive review process at every step of the way, basically. It is, and I, you know, I think a big part of that has been um, getting the full uh, support of the workforce and, and the education of the workforce behind it 
um, letting everybody know here's how your job is important, here's how it impacts the quality of the product. Yeah. Um, because right, there's there's it's manufacturing, so there's always something to fix, right? There's always a problem to be solved. Yeah, there's a lot of machines in here. There are, and, and so when you've got not only engineers, but the direct labor coming up with ideas, and hey, I noticed this, or hey, I stopped the machine because I saw this, or I was thinking this is a better way to do something, uh, that's been really cool to see, um, and has been a, a big part of our journey to be just making better stuff. All right, and now the moment you've all been waiting for, what makes a golf ball really look like a golf ball. Norm walks us through the ink and the painting. This is the actual process itself where we decorate the product. Oh, cool. Right, so white balls go in, oh, decorated whoa. balls come out. At a high level, oh this is- Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. At a high level, this is a pad printing process. There's ink on a plate, the pad, hence the name, picks up yeah. the ink and deposits on the, it on the ball. It's really cool. It's very satisfying having seen it kind of get to this point. Wow, it suddenly seems like a huge pain in the ass when someone orders like a Callaway 14 or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a base coat and a top coat. So the balls are being fed in behind this stainless steel enclosure. We're rotating the balls at a specific speed and spraying the balls with paint. Got it. Right? So we control that speed, we control the spray to make sure that the balls get that even coating. Exactly. Then they transition over to those robotic picker arms and move down the conveyor where the paint is cured. Very shiny now. We made it all the way from rubber mixing to core molding to painting. And thanks for watching. But on your way out, enjoy the most mesmerizing part of the entire process. These golf balls getting put in their packaging.